She is known for being a Canadian writer who was born and raised in Manitoba. Recognized for her impactful contributions to literature, she wrote numerous novels and short stories that explored themes of identity, social justice, and the Canadian experience. Her name is Margaret Lawrence. In the realm of literature, one name stands out, Margaret Lawrence, a Canadian novelist whose impact on the literary world is truly remarkable. Born as Jean Margaret Weems on July 18, 1926, in Nipawa, Manitoba, Lawrence's journey as a writer began in her early years. After the tragic loss of her mother at the tender age of four, Lawrence was raised by her maternal aunt, Margaret Simpson, who later married her father, Robert Weems. Despite the hardships she faced, Lawrence's passion for storytelling continued to grow. Growing up in Nipawa, Lawrence's formative years shaped her experiences and provided inspiration for her literary works. It was within the confines of her grandfather's home that Lawrence found solace and began to develop her unique voice as a writer. Nipawa became the backdrop for many of her novels, as she skillfully captured the essence and challenges of small-town life. This deep connection to her hometown would become a recurring theme throughout her literary career. Lawrence's profound contribution to literature lies in her ability to explore complex themes with depth and sensitivity. Her novels, such as The Stone Angel and The Jest of God, delve into the human condition and the struggles of women in a patriarchal society. These works not only showcase Lawrence's mastery of storytelling but also shed light on important societal issues. Through her writing, Lawrence brought attention to the experiences of women and ignited conversations about gender inequality and social injustice. Margaret Lawrence's life and literary works continue to inspire readers around the world. Her ability to craft compelling narratives that resonate with universal truths is a testament to her talent and dedication to her craft. In Nipawa and beyond, Lawrence's legacy lives on, reminding us of the power of storytelling and its ability to shape our understanding of the world. In the years following her graduation from United College, Margaret Lawrence found herself immersed in the world of journalism. She worked at The Westerner, a leftist weekly newspaper, and later joined The Winnipeg Citizen, a new independent newspaper. Through her reporting, she delved into a wide range of social and political issues, while also penning a radio column and reviewing books. It was during this time that Lawrence's personal life took a significant turn. She married Jack Fergus Lawrence, an engineer whose work took them to various parts of the world. They lived in England, the British Protectorate of British Somaliland, and the British Colony of the Gold Coast. These experiences sparked Lawrence's deep admiration for Africa and its diverse populations, which would become a recurring theme in her writing. Lawrence's connection with Africa grew even stronger during her time in Somaliland. She was deeply moved by the oral literature of Somalia and began recording and translating poetry and folk tales. These works would later be compiled into her book, A Tree for Poverty, Somali Poetry and Prose. Additionally, her two-year experience witnessing attempts to drill wells in the desert of Somalia and observing the social lives of both expats and Somalis would serve as the foundation for her memoir, The Prophet's Camel Bell, published in 1963. As Lawrence's family grew, so did her literary career. In 1952, she gave birth to her daughter Jocelyn during a leave in England, and her son David was born in 1955 in the Gold Coast. Eventually, the family settled in Vancouver, British Columbia, where they resided for five years. However, in 1962, Lawrence and her husband separated, leading her to move to London, England for a year. She then found a home at Elm Cottage, where she lived for over a decade, though she frequently visited Canada. Her divorce was finalized in 1969, the same year she became the writer-in-residence at the University of Toronto. Later on, she made another move to Lakefield, Ontario, and also acquired a cabin on the Otonabee River near Peterborough, Ontario. It was there that she wrote her acclaimed novel, The Diviners, during the summers of 1971-1973. Her remarkable journey and contributions to literature were recognized in 1978 when she became the subject of a National Film Board of Canada documentary titled, Margaret Lawrence, First Lady of Manawaka. Furthermore, Lawrence served as Chancellor of Trent University in Peterborough from 1981 to 1983. Do you want to explore more novelists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.